I, just, I do it over the grill because it's the simplest place to work, you know? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn these until I get some coals going. And then I'm going to uh, take those coals and I'm going to put them in my, um, I'm going to put them in my smoker. And basically it's a billows, you know? There's a little hole down here and it pumps the air into here or draws it. And there's like a little grill at the bottom. So I'll drop the coals in and then I'll, once I get those coals, I'll take some of this wood because you don't want the fire too hot or it hurts the bees because that smoke can be just really hot. So what you want to do is get a few coals in the bottom and then get more wood on top so it's burning but it's not, you know, uh, harmful to me. You really don't, I, I don't use a lot of smoke. Most people don't. If you use too much it'll annoy them. But the smoke basically just has them, it shoes them away, number one, and number two, they'll go eat the honey. They'll gorge themselves on honey thinking the hive's on fire. So it kind of calms them down, but that only lasts so long. So you, you just kind of, you have about 15 minutes per hive when you're in a hive. And otherwise, they start to really get disturbed. And the reason is, is because they got pheromones on them that rub against each other. And it starts with the queen and rubs to everybody else. And if you've disconnected them because you're pulling frames out, then you're starting to disconnect the hive from its scent and they start to get nervous when they don't think there's a queen or they think something's wrong. So. Yeah, that's burning. <laughs> that's burning pretty good. But anyway, um, I kind of like using the grill because I got all the tools I need to pull the coals out and do everything I need to do. So now, you know, I can just get some of these flaming coals, right? Flaming coals, flaming coals. And, uh, and I've got myself some fire going. And then, uh, and then I'll put some fresh wood on it. Fresh wood. And then we need to get dressed and down there once we get once we get this set up. bees is you don't want to kill a lot of them while you're down there is they let off a, in the they let off a pheromone that actually is supposed to smell a little bit like ripe bananas and um, and so basically when you're down there you don't want to kill bees you don't want to crush bees because it lets off it can let off that pheromone and when it lets off that pheromone like if they got on your face or your arm and they bit you that sting, that stinger, you got to get it out right away and wipe it and try to smoke it because they'll smell that and the more of them will come and try to sting you there. So we just give this a few puffs and we got ourselves a nice little smoke. Um, you can buy a bee brush. I just kind of, beekeepers are, are cheap. <laughs> you don't make much money selling honey. I mean, you got to do this if you like to do it. There's very few that are commercial. So uh, I was told to get a bee brush this morning to brush them off the, the frames. Dad, you look to... like marshmallow. <laughs> All right, they'll back. So uh, to get them off the frames when they're full and got honey, we're just going to dust them off. Dad looks like and uh, so that's what we're going to be doing. This is the hive tool. This helps pry the hive pieces, and you'll see that when we film it. They use propolis to stick everything together, which is basically sap from trees. And uh, man, stuff's really tightly glued down in those hives. Anyway, those are what we'll do when we get down there. You'll see it. So I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the smoker and walk down there, and then these guys will meet us down there. Hi, Jeff. Come on, buddy. Okay, we're ready. Let's go. When it's hot like this, they have to cool the hive down. And they go get water and they drink it and then they go back to the hive and they spit it out and, and flap their wings. And it it's like a mister. 
for the hive. Some of them, when they land, you'll see uh, on their backs, they'll see two sacks. Usually it's white this time of year, but it's pollen. And what they do is they get in a flower and they spin around and their hair kicks up all the pollen. And then they have two legs that comb it into what they call sacks on two hind legs. And then they fly back to the hive and you see it when they, they land. You'll see two pollen, back up Ace. You'll see two pollen sacks and then they go in and deposit it inside the comb. And they use that to mix up to help feed the, the larvae. And they'll be full of uh, pollen. In the spring, they all have it. And it's all different colors. It's really cool. Now, usually it's the ones that land and go right in that have the po pollen. It, and again, it's slow this time of year, but you'll still see them. So I need you to stand back and stay behind me. And then this is a telescoping cover. And basically, you just want to smoke a little bit around it in case there's bees there. And there's always, almost always, some on the lids. And you got to be careful when you take these off because you might have the queen there for some reason. And if you lose the queen, you're in trouble. You know, you got to go. You got to replace it. Now, see here. See how I can't pull that up? See how stuck that is? It's a. Uh, that's what we need the hive tool for. Because these things get. There's just a few bees on top here. And I'm just looking to make sure the queen's not there. Okay, now this top part, you can come on in closer. This is called the super. This is called the hive deep. This is the main body of the hive down here. And this is where they primarily do their work and, and plant eggs and so forth and, and raise the bees. These are called the supers and this is what they do when they take, um, we drop these in here. We drop these, uh, these are called uh, frames, and this wax is called foundation. And this helps the bees start to draw honeycomb away from the sides. And that's what helps them um, uh, create the, the, the wax and the honey gets deposited in here. And then you shave the very top of the caps off and you put it in a cycle, which we'll do later. You put it in a centrifuge and the honey will come out. So the idea is, is to try to get them to make it in these frames and uh, draw it out so then you can take the frames out. So that's what we're going to do now. And you'll see they've drawn some comb out. Let me get one where they've been working. And you can come in here and you can see they've even started making honey in this one. You see the comb that they drew out? They draw, they, they, what's called, the, the, do I need to get closer to you? So, so you can see where they're building wax, and then they're even depositing honey in there. They're out there getting honey right now, still from flowers, even though most of it's gone. You can see it's far more drawn out here on this side. And what you want is both sides to be drawn out, and you don't want to destroy that because it takes 10 times as much nectar to make wax as it does to make honey. So that's why you want to come in after they cap it. You just want to uncap it at the very, very top, get the honey out, and then reuse this next year for them and they can produce a lot more honey if they're not having to produce wax. Now I'm a, you'll see almost the whole middle is capped with a gray cap and that's where the queen plants eggs and then they, the bees, worker bees, the females feed them and when they get to a certain size larva then they uh, throw some more food in there and then they cap it and then it turns into, a, it, it morphs into a bee. And then it eats its way out, it cleans out its cell and the queen can come in and lay another egg themselves on honey before they leave the hive. So they're actually fat and happy. They're like a baby that's just nursed. And really when they're in those balls, they'll leave you alone. They're not going to bother you at all. They're looking for another home. But people go and spray them with hoses and do all that kind of stuff. It's the worst thing you can do. Most of the time they're just looking for the next place to live. So, you know, if you just leave them alone, they'll go away. And if they don't, call a beekeeper and they'll come get them for you. Okay, so we're going to pull some frames out of this hive here on the top. This is a much more aggressive hive and they produced a lot more than the other one. And so I'm going to replace their frames with frames that I have ready 
so that they can keep working and keep producing wax and drawing out the honeycomb. So next year I'll have many more of these than I had this year and it'll give us all a head start on making honey. This is a brush I'm going to use to brush the bees off the foundation to get the, take the, get the bees off. And then this is the container we're going to put these, uh, we're going to put these frames in. I think, uh, I don't know if you can smell that. Did you get a good smell of that? Huh? Yep. Can you smell that? That's good stuff. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to need all these frames, but I'm going to go ahead and get them prepared so we can drop them in. And what I'm going to need to do is take the honey out with the, with the wax, and I'm going to need to get all the bees off that I can, brush them off, and then I'm going to put them in and cover it so the bees can't get in there anymore and just keep doing that till I get all the frames out. So that's the process we're about to go through. I probably won't need all these frames, but just in case. The last thing you want to do is not have your stuff when you're already dressed up and ready to go. Okay, so, ready to do this. By the way, this is the first time I've done this. I just started in January, so anyone listening to this, you better go get a book and get somebody to help you, <laughs> help you, because who knows what I'm doing here. Smoke the hive, letting them know I'm coming in. And you'll see that they're already going to be more busy, if you will. Now take a quick look, make sure there's no queen, which is good. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a lot of bees buzzing me on this one versus the last one. They were just so, you know, laid back. That's that propolis again. They blew everything down in their hive, which is a good thing. Okay, so now these have a lot more work um, have been done on them by the bees, so I'm going to start pulling these out. Um, the end ones aren't as full as the, uh, the middle ones, but um, you can see some of it's not capped and some of it's not even drawn out here, but we can go ahead and get honey out of there. There's probably a pound of honey in there, maybe a half pound, who knows. So my first goal is to get them off of this. Right? And they don't like that, by the way. <laughs> I don't think you'd like to get shaken out of your bed like that, but... So now I'm dusting them off to get them off of here, because I don't want them... I don't want to kill them, and I don't want them in my honey. And I bring it over here, stuff it in, and then cover it. Now you'll notice there's one or two that'll start bothering me. They'll start hitting my mask, they'll start coming after me. And that's pretty much par for the course. This one's very full. This one feels there's, look at, see how the honey's capped on both sides? And look at that beautiful color. Isn't that something? That's just, that's almost like they're uh, packaging sunshine, you know? So, well, that didn't work so well. That beautiful buzzing noise. Okay. Come on, see. There's a basket in there, and you uh, after he, after we take the honey off, you put those in, and then the centrifuge takes the. Uh, Where'd you get that? Takes the honey, drips it in the bottom. And it's supposed to come out here, but I don't know if we got enough honey. Hey, It's an electric knife. This is used to uh, take the that wax top, the capped honey. It's used to take the wax off the top. 
without gouging into the honeycomb. Because you want to remember we're talking about, you want to save the honeycomb. Basically, it throws it out by the tip of the floor. So I'm going to turn it on. We'll do it real slow and I'll show you the reason why. But Wow. Hey, Rebecca. Let me show you an example. The idea of a knife is the knife, you have to be careful to do it and it floats on this edge and this edge. Okay. So we're going to take off only only that's sticking over. Okay. And the idea is because I come back and use it. So a lot of this is not there. Okay. So what you do with the knife from the top and the bottom, you just kind of use kind of grip of it, kind of like this. Oh, oh, sure. Motion yeah. like this. Yeah. See, it's hot. It is hot. Yeah. So this is the untapping tool. Okay. So what you do is you make sure to scratch open all of those caps. Oh, I see what you mean by all the honey coming Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can and smell it. I used to be very careful, but you have to make sure you get those on the top. Yeah. So put that down. Jiggle a little bit. Keep it from draining. Come over here. Man, I love that. So, so the idea, and this is just my method, I'm going to take from the bottom up. And there's going to be a motion and you'll get used to it. Wow. Okay. If you go too fast, you'll crush them. But again, it's, it's just a motion that you'll figure out and you'll get used to it. So go ahead. Top or bottom? Yay, okay, top. Beautiful, beautiful. Now put that down over there. Now take your capping tool. Yeah, when any CCPs. Oh, okay. Go ahead and scratch those off. Okay? So you can, don't be gentle. Because if you don't cap them, cap them, they won't come out. Okay? Looks like they're all done. Looks like flip over the other side. Maybe okay, you got a pretty good run of that one there. Okay? So, so I'm just going to turn it up like that. Keep the direction going this way. And what we do is, since this is centrifugal, they have to be balanced evenly. Okay? So, hang on a second. I, you'll figure that out. I'm just wondering if this is any good. Oh, I doubt it. Ah! <laughs> Millie, get some honey, get some honey. It's no good. Come on, give me some. Here, go ahead and pinch a piece off right there. That's half the fun. Jason, come on. It's not bad. Little chomp. Go ahead, put him in Get a chomp. Yum, yum, eat him up. That's why you spill a drop of honey, you wipe it up immediately. Hey. I'm going to pull, pull it all the way out. The idea is to uh, serrate it, kind of like a saw, and I'll slice it off. Otherwise, you'll like move the entire thing. And Tom will only know this because I've ruined a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, why is that? If those things, sometimes they'll like fall over, so you have to make sure when it started. Now, see how the honey is thrown out along the side of the rim? See yeah. guys? Don't put your name in it. Now, we'll go a little bit faster, but what happens, Tom, if think about it, if you've got two sides full of honey, yeah. and one starts to come out, and you flip it's it real fast, yeah. this weighted side, which hasn't been empty, will blow that plastic right out of there. Yeah. Here comes the honey! Asa, Asa, go stand next to Terry. No, Asa, you're good. Oh, okay. You got it? Can you hold it? Is I got to tip it? It's not going to come out. It's shy. Ooh. Everybody come and put their finger in there. I will, I will. Can you hold it? <coughs> Back up, Lily. Back up, Lily. Back up. Oh, oh, I got to turn this. You got it, Asa? Oh, my dad's helping me. Oh, okay. And my and the sister is helping me. Two and a half. Lily, get back, please. Two and three quarters. Okay. Lily, get back. Watch your head. Uh-oh.